Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Today's session is called Maturity Model for Modern IT Teams. We have two amazing IT leaders joining today to share some insights and, and nuggets of, of wisdom that hopefully will help you all. Uh, so my name is Barack. I am the CEO and, and co-founder of Intello. We are a SaaS management platform, SaaS to manage SaaS, and we work with modern IT leaders. Uh, we also have Erin, Erin Merchant, who uh, joined us last year as well. She has a, uh, she's had a new company this year called Robinhood. You've probably heard of it. It's one of the fastest growing companies in the world. Uh, and she's one of the, the IT leaders over there. We also have Danny joining today from, from Segment. Danny oversees the IT and security teams at Segment. He is an incredible modern IT leader that we are fortunate to have uh, today on on the the session and we'll learn more from him in, in just a, a few minutes. To kick things off, we kind of just wanted to set the context with talking about where we are today in 2020 and how that's impacted IT. Most importantly, I think the, the biggest change for many of us uh, that are attending Jaina is the remote work. And remote work is here to stay. So some stats just to share with you all. Okta, for example, have announced that they're gonna allow their employees to work remotely indefinitely. Google has announced that they are extending their remote work policies until July, 2021. Uh, Airbnb said that it's gonna allow their employees to work remotely through next August. And I think many companies, especially the ones that, that we all work at, are currently remote and will stay remote for us for a while. And that has changed the way that we work. We're no longer going around and spending each, each hour going to the conference rooms and making sure the AV is working and the ID cards and the building access, but it's, it's changed a bit. Uh, we, are, we are now focused on, on how do we manage this workforce at scale? And some stats just to share with you in terms of how the, uh, the SaaS market has, has continued to kind of grow and change as a result of that. So what you're looking at here are two different slides. One on, on the left-hand side, if you're staring at your screen, is the average number of SaaS apps in use by company. And what you actually see is that there's quite a significant amount of free applications in use. These stats were, were aggregated by Intello from our database prior to COVID. A lot of this has been exasperated as a result of COVID, right? You have employees working remotely. You don't have the same kind of network monitoring proxies and, and ways to, to block access, nor is, is that necessarily the, the, the right approach. Uh, and you're going to have a lot of shadow IT in your environment, and you're going to have a lot of paid applications. So getting control of it, understanding the, the visibility is, is even more key for managing a remote workforce. At the same time, the cost for these different SaaS applications continues to balloon and explode, right? I'm sure many of you are, are signing up for, for new SaaS products weekly for your teams and organizations, but then you also have the, the individual employees and, and departments signing up for their own products. And the average 500 person organization spends $7,000 per employee per year on SaaS applications. As you grow to about a thousand employees, it actually starts to go up to like 10,000. And then as you start to figure out kind of procurement and discounting, it, it starts to go down. Just a quick FYI, all of these slides will be shared after. We're a little bit limited in time today, but you'll, you'll get a chance to review that and share it with your teams and, and use it for whatever purposes you want. So moving on to the security threats. So we spoke about remote work changing the way that we work. We spoke about the adoption and proliferation and sprawl of SaaS applications, both free and paid. Uh, that leads to quite significant security threats and compliance risks in an organization. Some just to call out that, that we've seen, malware and phishing, this malware and phishing have, have actually exploded since COVID because uh, a lot of the, the hackers have, have seen that there's a lot of susceptible employees. Uh, Post-termination access, making sure users that leave the organization no longer have access to applications is more and more important. And of course, the, the compliance risks that, that go with everything. So as a result, we kind of think of the modern IT criteria as, as fourfold. And obviously, this is not all encompassing, but we just wanted to highlight four kind of key points to focus on for your organization with this new reality. One, and I think most importantly, is employee enablement. Right, uh, the way that, that we've learned from, from working with IT leaders is the best way to think about IT is how do we enable our organization to grow faster? How do we make sure that everyone is productive, right? So you have employee enablement. The, the second use case is cost optimization. 
how do we make sure that we're not overspending that we're in charge of our that, that we have visibility into our budgets and, and make sure that we understand where we're underutilized underutilized uh, applications over licensed applications and, and where you can actually optimize the third kind of core responsibility for for modern it teams is the security and compliance aspect all these risks that we spoke about all the shadow it uh, access control those sort of projects that that become more and more important in a remote world uh, and then four SaaS proficiency SaaS applications are the future of where we're working right we're we're recording this conference virtually all your employees are working virtually uh, in these different SaaS applications they become the the key kind of use case for productivity modern IT leaders becoming proficient and truly the experts on these SaaS products is a huge opportunity for everyone for all of us right collectively to kind of come together all right enough for me let's talk to the actual experts about all these all these different topics so Aaron and Danny, I know I, I introduced both of you uh, earlier, excited to have you here. The, the first question we have is what new training or skills are your teams working towards right now? I can, I can kick us off because I'm sure that Danny and I both have initiatives around this because it's essentially a perpetual thing. What I'm finding, especially in this, the year of 2020 and unknowns, the, the, the state of unknowns is that that particular statement actually has a huge impact on how we operate. And what that really means is that it is just that much harder to find who your stakeholders are, find where your shared responsibilities are, find ownership over particular tools, services, and projects. So what that really means for us is that I am working towards standardization. One of those levels of standardization comes specifically in the tools that we have and that we are utilizing. Um, those being the ways that we give and receive tickets and the ways that we communicate. The second part of that is doing proactive standardization around that. How much of that information can I actually get out to my user base and put in their hands as the responsible parties for their technology right now? And then the third of that is solely internal, which should really be number one because my team always comes first. Um, but that is essentially making sure that we understand what our process is. And so we, I am working heavily with my team to make sure that not only do they feel like they have ownership, but they also are able to individually ask questions around ownership, project management, and IT related initiatives at the same level that I would, because I can't be in the same room as them all the time. And not only that, in a lot of cases, they are more educated on the material than I am. Yeah, and on that, you know, I'll kick off from what Erin said, uh, very similar to hers. And I, I'm going to add a different lens to this, which is when COVID hit and we had to respond to the company shifting to a remote workforce, we, we didn't have time to really think about, you know, what is this going to look like in six months? I think a lot of us thought, hey, this is temporary. It'll go away in 60 days. So now that the dust has settled a little bit, we've had time to go back, reflect, kind of do a retro and look at okay, what are the areas of opportunities that we have, right? Our, our focus is always to keep employees productive. And similar to what Aaron mentioned, you know, we're looking at refining our process. We're looking at ensuring that the application stack that we have is clean, automating, right? You're really looking into the future and thinking if this is extended, you know, how can we enable um, people as much as possible to ensure that they're getting the most out of the systems that we're providing? And they're just able to stay as productive as possible as, um, I'm sure everyone on this call has experience and everyone listening to it, you know, it, it feels like there's a lot less time in the day, although you're spending more time in front of a screen. So another portion of that, I would say for new skills and training is really going back to the basics with the team and, you know, covering remote communication, you know, uh, putting a little bit of etiquette around that. Uh, similar to what Aaron mentioned, we're, we're not in the same room anymore. So those conversations that you maybe, you know, you sat a few feet away from somebody and you overheard and it sparked a great conversation or change. They're just not happening as organically anymore. So really figuring out a way to go back, you know, train your folks on that, have an open and honest conversation, um, because it's going to be absolutely crucial for anything that you're planning to, you know, roll out going into 2021. Uh, I think that we're, we're experiencing many of those same kind of new challenges and, and new ways to work and, and train employees. Moving on to, to the next question, what tools for IT has your team put in place for leverage heavily in the past year? 
Yeah, another good question. You know, like, like I mentioned, we were already on a track of automation. You know, we, we had done a lot of really good work in regards to uh, ensuring that on a foundational level, a lot of our process and applications were in a good place. Things we've really leveraged, um, you know, may not be a surprise, Zoom. Um, you know, I won't dig into that one too much, but really, really heavy on the collaboration. But the one that has surprised us the most has really been SaaS operations tooling. And, and that's kind of a new category for us. I don't think it's something that, you know, a lot of IT leaders have had to deal with in the past, but how do you manage this sprawl? <laughs> now that you really are remote, now that you have teammates that are remote, now, you know, a training is maybe not as effective as it used to be. So we're spending a lot of time in operations tooling, such as Shameless Plug, of course, Intello, right? We're using, we're leveraging that a lot to ensure that we know that employees have a good application inventory list. Um, aside from that, you know, providing the lens and partnering, like Aaron mentioned earlier, it's really hard to, to coordinate and figure out who your stakeholders are. So advertising more often that there is tooling and things available, you know, that are really good resources that we could be leveraging in this time. Um, so we focus a lot on spend. I'd say the third one really is Okta. We have spent so much time in Okta and looking at ways of how do we go back and clean up these SAML integrations? You know, the last conversation I had with a panel like this with, with all of you was about skim and that really even made me start to think about, you know, we need to do what we call an internal like SSO V2. Let's go back and revisit all of those applications. Let's make sure Okta is in really good shape so that we can start to create more rules and automation around it. I think we've gotten to the point in work from home culture where the obvious ones are now very ho-hum, but they're finding a new resurgence in terms of understanding the depth of importance, right? Like if I say Slack, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, cool story. But what that's essentially allowed for me to do and what I'm seeing in Slack at a company that's very Slack heavy, shocker, that's where the ad hoc communication is really happening. And as much as we like to, you know, complain about that being a distraction, it does allow for us to have a lot more free flowing communication where we are finding the pitfalls of unknown stakeholders or onboarding new employees or where we are still building a centralized repository for all of our data. Um, the other one that I am shocked, and I think a lot of people who know me would be shocked to hear, is that I am deep in the world of Atlassian now. And, you know, it is the tooling that we have, and we can all have strong feelings about what we like and don't like about particular platforms, but there's a lot to be said for working in one receptacle where your knowledge, your service, and work in progress can be visualized and managed across the entire company. My philosophy is that because my customers span the entire company, that I need to be able to have that at both my fingertips, but that also is something that I have to return in kind. And if I'm jumping around between multiple SaaS platforms to do that, um, when we are all ultimately focused on the same goal, I am both doing a disservice to my user base, but I am also slowing myself and my team down. So lessons have been learned. Uh, but what I can essentially say in terms of like not making that a product plug, because that's not my intention, is that standardization is really a huge key in this. And it is not to pull people out of the things that do help them in being the most efficient and most productive employee that they are, and at a team level and a department level. But that when you have an initiative around where that's, that information is mastered at a company level and then use those services in tandem and figure out the way that they can automate together, you are making a massive change in the way that people are going to understand what their mission is. I know that uh, I, I was head nodding throughout that Aaron, and I saw Danny as well, and I saw what Danny was sharing, you were head nodding. So it sounds like there's a lot of alignment in terms of the modern IT tech stack. This slide has a lot of content and, and it takes a little bit to unpack. So we'll, we'll share it after and feel free to take a screenshot while, while I'm talking about this. But just to walk you through it, what, what we're looking at is from bottom to top, kind of tier three, tier two to tier one level of maturity, like where to start and then what is the, the ultimate place to get to and the projects that you can take on. And then on the, the bottom of it, we have kind of the four different key buckets that we spoke about earlier in terms of 
one of the the goals and responsibilities of modern IT teams in today's day and age. And that's the discovery side, discover your, your kind of existing software stack in the first place, manage and optimize. Aaron spoke about consolidating and centralizing and finding your core suite. Um, and then moving on to secure, Danny spoke about the importance of, of skim and, and making sure Okta is set up from a security perspective. And then ultimately employee enablement, right? You have the centralized applications, you have the security in place, you've optimized it from a cost perspective, you discovered your tech stack. How do we now invest more and more in the productivity as, as Danny was mentioning as well? And so I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of these. Uh, I, I think just what's really important in order to drive success and get to kind of tier one across all four of these, these topics is to create a collaboration within your existing org. Figure out who your SaaS SWAT team is, right? Because it's larger than just the modern IT org. You need to work cross department, cross function to drive success. And, uh, but there is some of that that uh, is accountable on, on the IT teams and, and what we can do to, to, to drive that success. And here's just a, a few example OKRs. Uh, this comes from clients of ours that we've worked with who have been willing to, to open up and share some of their, their OKRs. Again, we will share those slides so you can have those example OKRs. Uh, bringing it back to, to Danny and Aaron to share a little bit more. Do you have any tips on, uh, for I, for teams in the early stages of their modern IT maturity, any any tips on what uh, different modern IT teams can kind of do to improve? Now, having moved from a couple of small companies, like a very established company with a lot of set processes to some small companies where you're building that from scratch and back into a place where you get to do a little bit of both, which is actually a very exciting challenge for me. Um, of what that really looks like when I was at the beginning and I was staring so like literally just so much proliferation in the face in my face <laughs> um and i think that the first thing that came to mind for me is that you really have to understand the why behind what people are using if you don't get that no matter how many things you want to keep or cut you're really not going to be able to make an established evaluation around that not only that you're not going to win any partners in the process of doing it um, and that was a huge, huge part of it for me. As soon as I started asking proactive questions, I both had a better understanding of the teams, what they were doing and why they were doing it and why they were using what they were using and why they had built these ad hoc structures without me or prior to me. Um, and then on top of that, sometimes you actually learn best practice for your own team, which I also think is really amazing for growth and modeling best behavior, right? If you're learning from those around you, you're getting free resources out of things that they've already created. Another thing that I, I have come to learn is really understanding your growth. And that doesn't mean anything to anyone in terms of just that statement. So let's actually use real human words. And that's how do you balance that tool evaluation that you're doing with the, the scale and sizing and growth that your company is telling you, you are going to be in six months, next year, in two years. That way you're doing that human thing that happens to all of us as we grow up, as you're growing into your shoes, but you're also leaving yourself enough room where you get to flaunt some really sweet kicks, right? You essentially also get to still evaluate things that are maybe a little bit newer and fresher and on the cutting edge, but that you see the appropriate development happening at the same or a slightly faster rate than you. Well said again, and you know, you, you hit a lot of points there that I would hit, you know, when I started, the IT presence was minimal. And one thing that I realized, you know, if, if I could go back and do it again today, and the recommendation I make to all teams that are looking to modernize, um, you know, their approach to IT or, or quickly, you know, make changes and make improvements, sit down, create a tracker, be brutally honest with yourself about the areas that are you cover from an IT responsibility perspective, and that's different everywhere. I think the one advantage that, that I had at Segment that I was very lucky it was that IT reported to corporate security. And that made it a lot easier for us to sit down and add a security lens to anything and everything that we were doing. But what we did was a very simple chart, you know, in the very early days was we sat down and we, we wrote down areas like SSO, right? You know, app inventory, asset management, uh, MDM. And in these categories, we, we gave it a very basic red, yellow, green. And what that did visually, especially when you have a smaller team, like Aaron said, 
going back to that table and being brutally honest with yourself, what it does is it gives everybody a visual indicator and it, you know, it, it allows you to see that change over time. And what we did, and, and obviously this changed, you know, we, we grew up and started using JIRA and advanced roadmaps, but it really kicked off um, a lot of excitement around, yeah, it's red, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. How do we get it to yellow? And then once we got it to yellow, we would reflect six months later and then look, how do we get it to green? Um, and my advice in that is don't focus on just one area at a time. Don't try to get to the 95% or 100%. Um, you're going to forget about other things that you should probably be focusing on a foundational level on. So scope, make sure you really understand, set good goals so that you get excited about things that you're shipping, understanding the impact. Um, I really think is a small but quick formula to success, especially when you're trying to, you know, mature your your overall uh, IT story within a company. Thank you both for sharing. I want to add one quick thing there, which is I know from being at prior JNUX and, and meeting many of you that you may not be the first IT person at your company, um, and you may the, you could be at an organization that's, that's existed for a few decades even, uh, but you may be striving to get to this kind of modern IT. Uh, workforce, especially as a result of COVID and, and a lot of changes in your business. And even if you're not overseeing the entire team, you can make positive change by taking some of those actions that, that Aaron and, and Danny recommended and, and mapping out realistically what's your roles, what's the team's roles, and, and how can you help? How can you help drive that, that positive impact and change? Uh, and connected to that, we have this landscape that, that we put together here. Now, uh, especially for those at, at some of uh, uh, the organizations that have existed for a while, it's probably not realistic to purchase products in every one of these buckets. And even for newer organizations or existing organizations, or even for the errands of the world at the, the you know, multi-billion dollar, highly valued startups that are raising massive rounds, it's still difficult to get everything in place. But there is an important thing, as Danny mentioned, of like, what are you striving for? And it's definitely not all encompassing from both the vendors and selections in the different buckets or just the, the buckets in general, but it's a starting point for you. Going back to, to you two, Danny and, and Aaron, um, where do you see the biggest, biggest opportunity for security improvement for IT orgs in general? Go ahead, Aaron. My dog's barking right now. <laughs> 2020. Um, mm, let's be real. I mean, security is really hard right now. Wah, wah, wah. Um, but that is actually the truth. Right? Is the thing that we are all very aware of that people's personal security and uh, corporate security is having a massive overlap in a way that it didn't previously, or it was much more, uh, dare I say, simplistic, because that's not actually the right word. But it, there was a, a much clearer line in where we could draw and how we could enforce that kind of security that we don't have right now. So my biggest improvement, especially because I also have a very lovable and smart and capable security team who is a massive partner of ours, is educating people. It is absolutely 100% all on the personal education around security and how that looks in this day and age. People having a general understanding of the ways that they can protect themselves in their personal life immediately correlates to the way that they work. Password vulnerability, malware and phishing issues, um, password management, and using a password manager. These are all things that protect my people intrinsically that are very low impact for me to communicate and me to educate on that make a huge, huge um, impact on their day-to-day -day work life. Um, there's some big picture stuff too that I always like to gloss over, you know, VPN is another thing that we're doing. The other thing that I will say that I think is relatively unique is SLA adherence. I don't think that we actually talk about this enough because it's very unglamorous and nobody actually likes being held to accountable deadlines within their own team in IT. We got enough going on, like we really don't, like the last thing we want to do is see that big red bubble of like you are over time. But this makes a huge difference because that is another portal into your world. And especially when you are offboarding people, that makes such a, a, a massive difference in knowing that some of your fraying edges of vulnerability are covered. It's also 
something that you can easily automate. So not only that, it makes it a great project for somebody to stretch themselves. If they are looking at that, you can implement it within the existing tooling that a lot of us have. It's also a great place to evaluate the ways that you can expand that beyond their team with like the better clouds or the Zapiers or the trade.io's or whichever one you want to use and doesn't offend you when I say that. Again, hit on, on really good points. Uh, I, I would again piggyback off of education is really the big one, right? You, really looking at what is your attack surface for, for different things. Um, you know, in regards to IT, it, really going back to that relationship with security, you know, Aaron mentioned she's got a rock star team, great partnership there. If you don't feel like you're using that type of language when you talk about the security team at your company, you really need to look into what you need to change in regards to that relationship. And it may be, different approach and again i'm really lucky because I, I i got to you know grow the it team under the corporate security wing and security is always top of mind but our our mantra and kind of our focus in regards to it is you know productivity with security in mind for our employees so we focus a lot on the same things uh, that aaron mentioned right there's a lot of education going around on zoom right now there's a lot of focus on on the home the new modern office right we're we're looking in and, and thinking about different ways that we as an IT organization can support a person working from home. Um, we've had conversations about how the home network could be an attack surface, right? And then that naturally leads into a conversation with corporate security and the greater security team about what are the controls that we're gonna put in place that already exist today? What do we need to refine? What do we need to change from an alerting and monitoring perspective? And that information has to make it back to an IT org. I think I complain about, I've complained about this a ton and my team hears me say it all the time. One thing that has driven me crazy about other IT teams and security teams that I've had the pleasure of partnering with, speaking with, is they never give each other credit for the work that they're supporting each other with, right? So the one thing that we all have to really take in and say, we're in this together. And as we go into 2021, for me, the biggest opportunity is fostering that relationship and that partnership between IT and security. That was awesome. Uh, I, I know I saw Erin snapping her fingers and I know I was nodding my head and I'm sure many people listening, they were doing something in the background and all of a sudden they, you, got, you got all their attention. I, I think you're definitely preaching to the choir. And you started to answer this next question we have. Al, we're a little bit limited in time, but I love if either of you can share like in like 30 seconds or less, any really kind of core goals that you're looking at for 2020 to 2021 and include both your team and for you. Either of you have, Danny, you want to? Want to yeah, I'll kick it off very quickly. Uh, you know, uh, you're gonna you're gonna pick up on a theme here of, of what we're working on at Segment, and it's going back and really refining things and and adding very key terms like least privilege, um, automation, uh, working with what we have, and really pushing the limits of the tools that we have today. So we're 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 looking at the major components of our program. Um, we're also opening the conversation up, not just to senior architects on the team, senior IT engineers, but support. Support's going through a very different, you know, uh, experience than what they had in the office potentially. One thing that I'm really excited about going into 2021 is that everybody's included in the roadmap process. Everybody has an opinion, has a say. Um, and I really want to ensure that I'm fostering a really open, you know, and honest conversation around what are we not thinking about, right? There's no dumb answer here. Let's write everything down. And then taking that to the security team as well and ensuring that it's in line with other people's roadmaps. 110% what we are doing too. Like if I had to shorten this, it'd be like, he said it, I'm done. Um, I am looking at all the ways where I can empower my team and our department as a whole to do more. And that doesn't necessarily mean taking on more work. It means what are these exposure level things that spotlight us as a manifestation of Robin Hood that is absolutely critical. And that is absolutely not to say that we are, we are not a known entity in that way already, but there is more that we could do. And there's more ways that we can touch and support the rest of the our, our fellow departments, especially in a production environment, especially living in engineering, that are not only best practices, but they're stretch goals for my team. So I know that they're getting the experience and the education that they desire so they can grow in their career. So they understand the organization that they're working for and with much better and at a deeper level. 
and so they can up level within the organization and so we can support and we can empower our partner uh erin danny thank you both so much for for sharing and spending the time just to kind of wrap things up we do have a few resources you can visit us at the jana booth uh we're offering as it relates to Intello, one month free for any JNF member. We offer by default a 14 day free trial. We're doing a, a full month and you can start that month once you're all set up and you can start seeing the, the value. Uh, love to share more about Intello. We're limited in time today. So if you head over to the booth, I'm happy to share more about how we can help and how we work with modern IT leaders. And thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for attending virtually. Can't wait to see all of you in person, hopefully in not that long. And have a great day.